Commander Zephyr Novak stood at the helm of the ISS Horizon, his piercing blue eyes fixed on the swirling azure and emerald planet below. Psylocke 7, as it had been designated, was a jewel in the cosmos and potentially humanity's first encounter with extraterrestrial life. Status Report Lieutenant Koda Zephyr commanded, his voice steady despite the excitement coursing through his veins. Lieutenant Ren Koda, the ship's young science officer, looked up from his holographic display. Sir, atmospheric composition is remarkably Earth-like. Gravity is 1.2 times that of Earth. Initial scans show vast forests, oceans, and structures. Zephyr raised an eyebrow. Structures? Natural or artificial? Artificial, Sir Koda replied, his dark eyes widening. But primitive. Nothing like our technology. It appears to be. Stone Age level, at best. The bridge fell silent as the implications sank in. Humanity had spent centuries searching for intelligent life among the stars, imagining advanced civilizations with technology beyond their wildest dreams. Instead, they'd found a species still in its infancy. Prepare a landing party, Zephyr ordered, straightening his crisp uniform. Full hazmat protocols. We observe only, no contact unless absolutely necessary. As the crew bustled into action, Zephyr caught the eye of his second-in-command, Major Ash Reeves. The grizzled veteran nodded, understanding the weight of the moment. Hours later, Zephyr led a team of five through the lush alien forest. The air, despite being filtered through their suits, smelled sweet and unfamiliar. Strange, multi-limbed creatures scurried through the underbrush, eyeing the newcomers warily. Commander Koda whispered, gesturing ahead. Look, through the trees they could see a clearing, and in that clearing stood a village, if it could be called that. Crude huts made of branches and leaves formed a rough circle around a central fire pit. And there, tending to the flames, were the aliens. They were bipedal like humans, but that's where the similarities ended. Their skin was a mottled green and brown, perfectly adapted to their forest home. Four arms sprouted from their torso, each ending in three-fingered hands. Their heads were elongated, with large, multifaceted eyes that reminded Zephyr of insects. Fascinating Coda breathed, his scientific mind already racing with questions. Major Reeves grunted. They're exposed to the elements. No proper shelter, no tools beyond those sticks. They're completely vulnerable. Zephyr nodded, a mix of wonder and concern washing over him. We need to tread carefully. Our very presence could dramatically alter their development. As they watched, one of the aliens smaller than the rest, perhaps a child wandered away from the group. It moved deeper into the forest, oblivious to the hidden humans. Suddenly, a blood-curdling screech filled the air. The alien child had stumbled upon a predator, a massive, six-legged beast with razor-sharp claws and gleaming fangs. Without thinking, Zephyr burst from cover. His plasma rifle hummed to life as he placed himself between the child and the predator. The beast roared, confused by this new threat, but undeterred. Commander, no Reeves shouted, but it was too late. Zephyr fired. A bolt of blue energy struck the predator, sending it flying backward. It crashed into a tree and slumped to the ground, unconscious but alive. The forest fell silent. Zephyr turned to the alien child, who stared up at him with those huge, multifaceted eyes. Fear, confusion, and something akin to awe swirled in their depths. Then chaos erupted. The village exploded into activity. Adult aliens swarmed forward, brandishing crude spears and rocks. They formed a protective circle around the child, chattering in a language that sounded like a mix of clicks and whistles. Zephyr raised his hands, trying to appear non-threatening. Easy, he said, knowing they couldn't understand. We mean you no harm. The rest of the landing party emerged from the trees, weapons lowered but ready. The aliens' agitation grew, their clicks and whistles reaching a fevered pitch. Commander Coda said urgently, We've broken every first contact protocol. We need to leave. Now. Zephyr knew he was right, but he couldn't tear his eyes away from the aliens. They were so vulnerable so unprepared for the dangers of the universe. How could he leave them like this? One of the aliens, taller and adorned with colorful feathers, stepped forward. It pointed at Zephyr, then at the unconscious predator, then back at Zephyr. A series of complex clicks followed. 
I think, Coda said slowly, it's thanking you. Zephyr nodded, then slowly reached into a pouch on his suit. The aliens tensed, but he moved deliberately, showing he meant no harm. He pulled out a small, glowing cube and emergency beacon and first aid kit. Carefully, he placed it on the ground and stepped back. The lead alien watched him curiously. It's a gift, Zephyr said, miming opening the cube. It will help keep you safe. The alien leader hesitated, then reached out with one three-fingered hand. As soon as it touched the cube, a soft blue light enveloped the entire village. A force field, invisible but impenetrable, sprang to life. The aliens gasped collectively, their clicks and whistles rising in volume and complexity. The field will keep out predators and protect them from environmental hazards, Zephyr explained to his team. It's programmed to last for five years. Enough time for us to figure out how to help them without interfering too much. Reeve shook his head, a wry smile on his weathered face. You're a bold one, Commander. Anthropologists back home are going to have a field day with this. As the humans prepared to leave, the alien leader approached Zephyr once more. It held out a crude necklace made of colorful stones and feathers. With surprising gentleness, it placed the necklace over Zephyr's helmet. Thank you, Zephyr said, touching the gift. We'll be back. I promise. The trip back to the horizon was silent, each team member lost in their own thoughts. As they shed their hazmat suits and gathered for debriefing, the weight of what they'd discovered and what they'd done settled over them. So, Reeve said, breaking the silence. 